If the patient is non-serotic, you should treat uh, TB. Non-serotic, you should treat TB first. There is no agency of uh, treating hepatitis C. Uh, and ideally, uh, you should not treat even serotic patients. You should not start uh, therapy if you have active TB. Address TB first and then treat uh, HCV infection. So the, the effect of DA would get uh, changed because most of the drugs are going to uh, affect with P450, especially Declet as well. Uh, you have to take care of it. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, I have a very simple but very important question here. Sir, I have a very simple and important question here. If I am sitting in the clinic and... Uh, Sorry, what? Second? Sir, Sir, very important, but it's a simple question mm -hmm. also. Sir, uh, if uh, I'm sitting in the clinic, some patient came and she took, I found that she is positive, hepatitis C positive. First of all, uh, it will be a real psychological, mental, and physical trauma for her or him. Then I'll say that uh, I'll refer to you, someone who is specialized, and uh, you will, inshallah, you will be better with 12 week treatment. The very next question came is that, Dr. Saiba Kharcha how, how much it will cost? Well, this is a uh, very important question. Can you give a clue for that uh, for all of us? It depends which regime you are using and uh, the brand that you are using. Like if you are using originator brand, then the cost will be high. Uh, approximately 42,000 uh, per month for uh, Sovendi. 42,000 rupees per month for Soveli. Nowadays, uh, Gilead and uh, Firo Sons have agreed to give one plus one, which means first month you purchase, second month is free. So it comes down to 21,000 rupees per month uh, with the originator uh, research brand molecule. Uh, if you're using uh, good brands, the official price is 5,680 or something, uh, approaching 6,000 rupees, uh, the maximum for uh, me too products and uh, sometimes you have like uh, cheap products maybe like 3500 rupees the minimum uh, maybe 3500 to 4000 rupees per month so this sounds like uh, 24000 rupees for six months therapy if you're using uh, surface bubble and rabobarin if you're using declet as well and uh, surface bubble declet as well is uh, 9000 official price when we get on the SLS uh, criteria that is important for the patient, uh, the only uh, source is OBS. Uh, and uh, through OBS, this is 9,500 rupees uh, per pack. So this is like uh, 28,500 rupees for three months. And uh, if you're getting the same uh, MyHab by OBS, this is uh, 5,600 rupees per month. So that is how the cost Sir, is. So my question is, Okay. What is the impact of these new treatment on the future of liver transplant and uh, uh, transplant surgeons as a career? <laughs> because, uh, yes, uh, with the treatment of uh, hepatitis C, the treatment is approaching nearly 100% and we expect uh, good, very good uh, therapies in the near future. So the incidence of hepatitis C is going to come down. Like previously, in 80s, the hepatitis B was rampant. Uh, we used to uh, see more hepatitis B as compared to hepatitis C, and now we are seeing more hepatitis C. And what is expected in near future is uh, going to be NASH, which is going to take over hepatitis C uh, as a cause of uh, cirrhosis and requiring liver transplant. The problem with NASH is this is more aggressive, and the chances of uh, HCC is more as compared to hepatitis B and C with a similar uh, fibrosis score. My question is? This is all, already, already the law for human organ transplant is passed. HOTA, uh, human organ transplant authority, HOTA is taking care of these things. Uh, this is the consent that is given. Like uh, the first transplant, uh, disease transplant happened in Lahore 
uh, exchange site hospital was uh, from the accidental death of a young boy whose family donated uh, the liver uh, to another patient and uh, that's how. Legislation is there but you cannot compel because this is the consent. Sir, my question is sir, married female on treatment of hep C and retrovalent therapy, uh, should uh, she use uh, contraceptives? Yes, of course. Which? It depends. Whatever uh, she likes. <laughs> uh, again, I think that the, the bottom line seems to be, at least to me as a pathologist, that the earlier we start treatment, the better is the prognosis for hepatitis C. So I think the thing can be, if we don't check for hepatitis, when the patient will find out and get unhappy is actually you're doing a patient a disfavor. So the key is now if we want to eradicate hepatitis C, which seems like a possibility, we should look at it more aggressively, screen more aggressively and treat early because the results are better, the costs are less and in the end the patient benefits from that. So the earlier detection will help. Yes. Transmission, yeah. Transmission, yes, uh, barrier method is uh, the preferred method for uh, conception as well as it is going to prevent the transmission. But the question was uh, what contraception uh, that we should use uh, while on therapy. So it depends on uh, the choice of the couple as well as uh, specific needs. Like some people, you cannot use uh, hormone preparation as injectable uh, if you have uh, a procoagulant state or something. So every case should be taken as an individual case. Sir, my question is that patients are getting benefit from DAs, those patients with child C decompensated liver disease in specialized centers. So in child class C, what are the limitations or cut-off value or severity of the disease where we label that this patient may so not when, benefit? When we are using, uh, we are treat, planning treatment uh, with child C patient, ideally if I go by uh, the package insert or leaflet insert, this should be the patient who is going for transplant. The class one indication is a person, decompensated child C person, uh, going for transplant, he should be treated in a transplant center with the uh, DAs under strict observation. Uh, they should get negative so that a transplant can uh, start. Uh, because uh, if you do transplant in a positive patient, uh, this is going to destroy your liver very soon. Uh, the try time of index uh, person getting needle prick suppose and getting a liver cirrhosis is 25 years. But while the person is on immunosuppressive therapy, this is very rapid progression and this, the time is only 5 years that you get uh, after transplant, you get decompensated liver disease. So these patients should be treated in the transplant center or a specialized center at least. Uh, if they get decompensation, they should be referred to the transplant immediately. Uh, moreover, if you're treating advanced cirrhotics, maybe child B or even child A, uh, take care of uh, the end stage things like you should screen them for uh, variceal hemorrhage if this, uh, varices, if this is large varices, you uh, obliterate the varices by repeated band ligation. Uh, if the cytis is there, try to address the cytis first and then once the cytis is well controlled on low dose of uh, diuretic, then you should start therapy. The monitoring should be very vigilantly done. It should be uh, initially two weekly uh, for initial six weeks and then you may increase to four weekly. But it depends from person to person. So it means all the patients who are candidates for liver transplant, whatever the severity of the disease is there, they should get benefit from DAs in the specialized centers. If child score is more than 12, then this is point of no return. Even after C comes So if child score is more than 12, then this patient should be on treatment and this patient should be referred to So child score is very important. So more than 12, this is point of no return, then this patient should be referred for liver. Okay, the simple you. answer is child score more than 12, 
this is point of no return, even after C virus becomes inactive, your patient will not improve. Okay, my second question is for Dr. Vachain. <coughs> Sir, those patients of uh, chronic hepatitis B or chronic hep C, not patient with cirrhosis. So, for example, who are not candidate for antiviral therapy in chronic hepatitis B, those patients who are immune, immune tolerant phase. So, what is the ATD regime? Is the same as in, uh, in a patient without hepatitis B or C? Or those patients with hepatitis C who are on antiviral therapy, their ALD is most of the time normal or uh, one or two times more than the uh, upper normal limit. So what should be the ATT regime in such patients? Good. Uh, is, if the, it, it depends what is the status of the liver functions. Uh, hepatitis B or C positive is not necessary that its liver function is abnormal. But if they are up to two times normal, high, AST in particular, you normal treat them with normal. ठीक है और अगर इससे ज़्यादा है तो उसमें फिर आप अवॉइड करना शुरू करेंगे जिस तरह पाय पारेजिनोमाइड को आप अवॉइड करेंगे। There is no contraindication for treating tuberculosis in people who have a slightly raised liver function test and who are positive for hepatitis B or C. So you can treat them accordingly. But if their enzymes are more than two times or three times the normal limit, then you have to take all the measures to limit the hepatotoxicity of the drugs. Then you have a choice of using combination of therapy in which there is one hepatotoxic drug or combination which has two hepatotoxic drugs and in every case you must avoid pyrazinamide. I think your question is addressing that uh, the patient is just is having a chronic hepatitis or that has gone to the cirrhosis stage. Are these two patient population that there is the different guidelines. If the person is just is having the chronic hepatitis, but there is no cirrhosis, so it means what the conventional ATT were, were using it, that can be used safely. But you